2016 edition of the International Women Fire Conference while flying to the U.S. with my wife Becky. It reveals the unique purpose of God for women in our world. It confirms the worth and value of the feminine gender. My wife Becky and daughters Deborah, Daniela and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Every agenda of hell to keep anyone frustrated at this season, Father, we declare that every frustration is hereby terminated. In the name of Jesus, you can't be frustrated and you can't be resisted. You can't be defeated. You declare that and determine to fulfill your purpose. In the name of Jesus, this is the Restored Woman Platform, and I welcome you once again, and I thank God for life. I thank God for every one of us choosing to be alive at such a time as this. We give God all the praise. The Bible says, let the living praise the Lord, and we praise God for life, and we thank God that we are alive in the land of the living. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says that a living dog is better than a dead lion. So, if you are alive, thank God, because there are some things that a lion that could have that uh, a lion supposed to do, but is dead now, and you that is alive will do what they couldn't do. I tell you something: life is a gift and it's precious. The worst thing that can happen to a man is to be alive and not to fulfill the reason why he's alive. My prayer for you this season is that you will not only be alive, you will be kept alive and you shall fulfill the purpose why God has given your life. Praise the name of Jesus. We have been handling the topic, winning the battle. Winning the battles of life. 
is a progression that we began with recognizing the real enemy of the woman in this restored woman platform. We handled that in details immediately we stepped into this year. And from there, we began to handle the topic to recognize the enemy, how to identify the enemy, how to win the battles, how to destroy strongholds. Because recognizing the enemy, knowing what he has done, knowing what he has established in your life, you will now progress to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Because you cannot progress into what God has for you without destroying those strongholds. The Bible says that we should till up our fallow grounds and we should not sow among tongues. Anything you want to do without removing the things that choke up your life is as good as doing nothing. Because no matter the efforts we invest in whatever we are doing, if we have not eliminated, eliminated the things that suck the very life out of what we do, we are making no progress. And this year, the Lord has determined to help us to eliminate those things that suck the very life out of us, that frustrates our efforts, so that we can freely move into the purposes of God for our life. We have looked at that destroying strongholds, uh -huh, and the Lord led us into this one, winning your battles. How to win your battles? We began the introduction into this winning your battles. We looked at the man Judas Iscariot. We saw how Peter was talking about him in the book of Acts chapter 1. We read it the last time. Please, if you missed that episode, please, you can just look at it. That was the last episode of the restored woman before today. We looked at winning the battle. We saw that Judas didn't win that battle. He didn't win the battles. In fact, he didn't, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that he didn't even recognize there was a battle over him. He thought, was thinking that, no, so just like some people today, we are thinking, you know, something can just happen here or there, not really looking deep into some things. And we saw how Peter also was confronted with, by the same enemy, with some battles. You know, all of us have the flaws. And we looked at our life and we said, let's go back and look at our life and look at the tendencies. I remember giving us an assignment. I say, every one of us, <laughs> you look at your life and ask yourself, what are the things that I'm, I have tendencies to do? What are the things that I have a tendency to do that the enemy can use to gain access into my life. If we don't watch these things, we will not win the battle. And let me tell you, the Lord is not expecting us to come back failures. He said, he that overcome it, there is something to overcome. If you don't win this battle, you will be overcome by the enemy. So God has given us this privilege to look into our life and look at the area the enemy gains access into our life and how to close up those areas, stand our ground, and progress into the things that we're supposed to do in life in spite of the enemy, despite his presence. And you know what? The enemy cannot stop someone who has discovered how to balance up the weaknesses that the enemy always confronts them with. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh and found nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He has no link in me. There is no link. There is no point. There is nothing that the enemy can use to penetrate me. And if you can come to the point where you know that the things the enemy penetrates into your life are those things. And when you avoid them, my dear, you will live a fulfilled life. You fulfill destiny. And then you will crush the head of that devil. Praise the name of Jesus. So we looked at Judas last time. And we saw that Judas didn't watch it. He never even understood that there's a battle going on. God has called him. You know, if you have a calling, my dear, you are, you are an envy of devils. Because you have taken a position that they will never ever have throughout their existence. And you know what? He was called. It was a high calling. We had Jesus talking to them. He said, 12 of you. They were asking him, we that have left everything and followed you, what is going to be? He said, none of you that have left father, mother, all of you, you are going to receive in this life a hundredfold of whatever you have been denied of. And then in the life to come, eternal life. And for the disciples, he told them, the 12 of you, the apostles, he said they will sit in thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Can you imagine that? What a calling, what a privilege. There is something beyond now that whatever we are living now, we are living for that. 
Praise the name of Jesus. And we saw how even though he had those great promises, he had great destiny, yet he didn't watch it. He ended so badly. The Bible says that he purchased the field of iniquity. He didn't buy it by himself anyway, but he casted that 30 pieces of silver that he sold the Lord into the temple. And those people who were leaders, religious leaders, who were, oh my God, my God, let's not go there today. But we saw that they took that money and they went to buy a field to bury strangers in. You can imagine that was all the inheritance that Judas got in following the Lord. He ended himself a very bad name that he's referred to as someone that failed. We also saw Peter last time. We saw that Peter also had the confrontation by the same enemy, but something prevailed over Peter. We also said that Peter prevailed not because he was better than Judas. No. He was not better than Judas. He didn't do anything what, as in he, what he did was, you know, was bad, but not as bad as Judas. It's not true. The mercy of God located him. He was a man that the Lord helped. And I pray for the help of God. You know, Judas walked to a point that he walked out of the confines of the grace of God. He walked out and he walked into his destruction. We are watching our lives and guarding our lives so that we don't end up destroyed. Some people got destroyed. They never even knew what hit them. You know, Judas was actually thinking that this is not going to, he never knew it was going to turn out that way. Just like we are progressing in some things that are forbidden and you never knew. You know, there's something my husband always says. He said, when a man escapes after he did something wrong, when he commits a sin and is not found out, that man will be tempted to do it again and do it again. And he will be tempted to live with it. He knows clearly that this is not supposed to be done. And when he, 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 he does it and he escapes without being noticed, he will be tempted to live with it. And that is something that is very dangerous. You know, he came to a point where he was taking for granted the grace of God that was available for him. Our determined counsel is to make sure we find out what is available for us. And especially this year, 2022, we are determined to recover grounds that has been taken from us. Grounds we're supposed to have gone so far before now. Some of us have been cut short because of the battles of life. We are learning how to win these battles of life so that we can gain ground, so that we can recover all the enemy has done, and so that we can fulfill our destiny on earth. So today we are reading the book of Hebrews chapter 12. We read verse 1, and then we continue. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing also, wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight mm, and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Is a race, I call it a journey, I call it a pilgrimage, and it's a lifetime. And we are seeing that it is set before us. He said we should run it with patience. We should run it with perseverance. But we were told something here. You say lay aside every weight and lay aside every sin that so easily beset us. That word beset is the word ensnare. There are sins that can ensnare us. That means trap us. And if we go towards them, enticing us, it can ensnare us. The Bible says we should lay them aside. We should not allow them to Come around us, say, do things that so easily. Now, we are looking at what are those things that so easily beset us. The last time I told us, you can give yourself an assignment. You can look at yourself and ask yourself, what are those things that so easily beset me? Because the truth is that what is besetting sin of one person 
It's not likely to be the same thing that can trap another person. It is your assignment. If you really want to succeed, win the battles, and fulfill your destiny, to find out the sins that so easily beset you. The Bible says, lay down the weights, lay it aside, and then those sins that easily beset us, those sins that are easily ensnaring us, you should be able to identify your own. We looked at the life of Judas, and we found out in Judas' own case, his own was the lust for money. His own was anything that has to do with money. We will trap that guy with that. We looked at Peter. Peter had a, 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 a weakness. We saw it in the scriptures. He was not stable. He's a man that can dance to this stone and dance to this stone. If he sees you, he will identify with you. And then that was why the devil tempted him with betrayal and it got him. The devil didn't tempt him with money. He knows that he will not fall. So what is that sin that can easily ensnare you? We are looking at identifying them. If you want to win this battle, number one, one thing you should do is to be able to say, this one is my weakness. The devil may not get me with this, but I tell you he can get me with this. If you identify it, the work is half done. Because we now know what to do with the rest of the things. We saw that the Bible said we should lay aside this weight and run the race that is set before us. Winning our battles is our battles, is your personal battle. Because what you are battling with may not be what another person is battling with. Those things the enemy can get your life to, that's what we are looking at. And then when we have discovered them, then we continue to know how to lay them aside. How to lay them aside. There is a way to lay them aside. There is a way to allow the things that can get you easily to be relegated to the background so that you can run this race, win your battles, fulfill your destiny, stand before God and say, Lord, I am a victor. I am not a victim. I went, I conquered, and here I am. Paul said, I fought a good fight. He fought the things that were his personal weaknesses. He didn't allow them to overwhelm him. Peter had this tendency. He can betray the devil noticed that and hit him with that. In fact, when the Lord Jesus saw it to him, he said, this guy is unstable. But because he has a heart for me, I will do what? I will solicit upon this rock, I will build my shot. And the devil was looking at a weakly, looking at someone that is unstable and wondering how God is turning him into a rock. And the devil came to tempt him. That was why Jesus said, upon you, I will build my church. And you know what? He told him, he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. The same guy that was unstable, we even saw him in the book of Galatians. We saw Peter there, and there was something that was going on. There was a time there was a division. People were frustrated. They, they couldn't understand. He was a Jew, and the Gentiles are coming to the Lord Jesus. We are one brethren then, and you know what was happening? The, the those that were Jews were saying they must be circumcised. And then he was mingling with them because he understood Paul. He understood what Jesus said. Oh, you are all one, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, circumcised or uncircumcised. He was living freely, but the the Bible says when the brethren that came from Jerusalem came to them there and until something happened, the Bible says Peter withdrew himself and refused. He was eating with them before. He was enjoying fellowship with them before. But he saw people that came. This is the rock. This is Peter, the chief of the apostles we are talking about. He had this weakness and by the time he saw the people that came from Jerusalem, the Bible said he withdrew from them and did not eat with them. It took the younger apostle to rebuke him and say, Peter, what do you think you are doing? He was betraying those brethren. Imagine how those brethren could have felt. That is a weakness. 
Now can you discover your own weakness? Because we are not here to talk about the failures of others. We are here to look at the things that are tender in us so that we can find them out, balance ourselves, lay them aside, and run the race that is set before you. Because I can assure you, if you cannot sit yourself down and look at those weaknesses that brings you down and ask God for grace, the way he gave Peter grace, Peter ended well. He fought the good fight. He said the time has come for him to lay down this tabernacle. He fought, he ended well in spite of his weakness. I want to let you know the weaknesses that made you to fail before. You can receive grace today and you can fulfill the purpose that God meant for you. Judas never thought about it. He never, he never, he never considered that this thing is leading him to destruction and he ended as a reference point of evil. You can imagine his family members remembering and seeing all the other apostles we are doing. And they say, my brother was part of these people. Oh, oh look at, look at James. Look at John. Look at Andrew. Look at Bartholomew. Look at all these great people are doing. My uncle was part of them. Oh, but he died. Purchasing a field of blood. Everybody in Jerusalem heard what Judas did. All of them knew. All of them knew. He betrayed the Lord. He hung himself. And where he hung himself was where they bought the field. And they were buried strangers in it. His stomach, the Bible says, busted open and gushed out. What a horrible way to die. That weakness, if you don't watch it, will lead you to a horrible destruction. And God will judge every sin. It is wickedness. If we don't turn to God and say, Father, this thing in me, this tendency in me, I have failed several times, but I want to receive grace to end well. It is not your weakness that is leading you to destruction. It is your inability to call for the help of God to help you in that weakness. God knew about it. That is why he told us, we have witnesses that have gone ahead of us. And when we have these weaknesses, we are supposed to learn, look at their life and learn from them. He said, lay aside because you have seen that these people that failed, fell because they did not lay aside those weights and those things that gets them easily. They couldn't lay it aside. And what happened? What happened? They ended badly. They ended badly. But God is calling us. Calling us to come to the point. Where we look at their life. I want to talk about Samson briefly. You know Samson? You know him very well. Samson, as anointed as he was. Samson... As anointed, the Bible said the Spirit of God would come upon him. He would do some things extraordinary. But you know what happened to Samson? Mm. Samson couldn't watch his own weakness. You know, his own weakness was not money. His own weakness was not money. His own weakness was women. Hey! Samson became a victim because he never watched to lay aside the weight. Your weakness is a weight. Your tendencies is a weight. When God wants you to move forward, the devil brings those thoughts and instead of moving forward, you begin to entertain it. And then it weighs you down. The enemy catches you and traps you. You are ensnared. We want to move forward. You can't move forward with the weight. Mm -mm. You need to lay it aside. You can't move forward. To win these battles, identify what those weaknesses are. That is what you are doing today. What are the things that, what are your failures? Can you, don't tell us. Look at yourself. Look at your life. Look at your failures. Look at the places where you have failed. And look at what led to those failures. There must be an opening that whatever, anytime the enemy comes, he gets you with that. Anger, Sexual immorality, promiscuity, pornography. What is it? Gossip. What is it? Soft life. What is it? Compromise. Lies. What is it? What, has, what is it? Don't ever excuse it. If not, you'll be a victim of this battle. For we to win this battle, remember Jesus is waiting to re receive us as overcomers. 
He is waiting to receive us as overcomers. It will pain the heart of God. When he looks and sees, you are not laying aside this weight. He knows you will eventually not make it. He knows. That's why he told us and commanded us, lay aside every weight and the sins that so easily beset you. If you can discover those things, then you have 50%. The remaining 50% will be easier to handle. But if you keep excusing it, you know, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I can't do without uh, whatever this weakness. At least I'm good in these other areas. I'm good in these other areas. We didn't hear that Samson stole anybody's money. We didn't hear he betrayed anybody. In everything we saw, it was this one that was his challenge. That challenge can bring you down no matter how good you are in other places. Judas never touched any of the women. In fact, he was irritated at the one who was even pouring the, alab or the perfume on Jesus. He was like, why didn't this woman bring this money? His own is money. He didn't care about the women. And that singular weakness brought him down. Don't praise yourself for the good things you have. Remember when Jesus went to have mercy on that man that was with that hand, he told him to stretch out the withered hand. Good. Jesus didn't tell him to bring out your good hand. Your good hand is already good. Those good areas you are good. Please don't, don't use it to cover your bad areas. Stretch out your withered hand. That is what Jesus wants to make whole. That is what God wants to make whole. That is what God wants to save you from so that you don't become victim. A lot of people are victims today. They are regretting their life. Because they don't even know what hit them. They never watched it. I said the last time all of us have a high calling in Christ. Every one of us. You have a high calling. You have a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. Whatever it is, you are called a businessman, a minister of the gospel. Whatever field you are called, if you are a child of God, it's a high calling. And for you to fulfill your high calling in whatever field you are, you need to lay aside the weight that easily besets you. Those things that when they come, they get you. Today, I want us to identify it. So that by next time, we know how to handle them. You know how to handle them. We can look at if what Judas could have done that could have saved him from that snare. We are still having people today repeating the same thing. And landed the way he landed. Are we not blessed to receive words from the Lord that can keep us? The Bible told us here, we are surrounded with so many people. Great cloud of witnesses. These witnesses have gone ahead of us. We can look into their lives. We can learn how they did it. We can learn how not to do it from their lives. And we can package our life well. The Bible told us that they without us will not be made perfect. That means our life, living better life, will make their life to be perfect. Oh, I failed here. I failed here. You learned from me. You did it well. The Bible says we are the same family of whom the, all the families of the earth are named. Some of them are already in heaven. Some of us are still here. But we are one family purchased by the same blood of Jesus. If you are not born again, I tell you the truth. Your goodness is like a filthy rack. If you are not born again, if you are not born of the Spirit, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you are feeling I'm a good person. You know, I met a man, I was asking him, so you're born again. He was telling me how he had an encounter and something, you know, had an encounter. He believed it was an angel that talked to him and gave him something. He never knew how to do it and he was doing it. You know, I asked him a question, are you born again? He said, uh, everybody is born again. <laughs> everybody is not born again. Born again is a conscious thing. With Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. There is a kingdom of God. You can't enter it unless you have been born the way you are born by your parents. You have to be born in the spirit. He that is born of the flesh remains flesh, dies as a flesh, and goes to hell. Born of the spirit. So we're talking about bringing out your weaknesses. So if you're an unbeliever, you're trying to bring out your weakness, you need to first of all be born again. 
You need to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior first. And then you come into the family of God. And having done that, all of the good things to do, the Bible called it filthy rags. The best you can do, all of your good things, they are called what? Filthy rags before the Lord. You have to take up the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when the enemy wants to hit you with that, your weakness, you get the strategy and tell the devil, I may have been a drunkard before. I may have been a drug addict before. I may have been a womanizer, a womanizer before. I may have been a fornicator before. I may be a liar before. But you know what? I have received grace. I received grace. Paul said I was once a blasphemer. But the grace of God located me. And I began to uphold. I began to walk accordingly. That thing I lived against. I lived with it. That is a powerful testimony. And God wants to give you the same testimony. Praise the name of Jesus. Somebody wants to give his life to Christ today. He wants to say, Jesus, please, I want to accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to start so that I can continue my life, live my life well, discover purpose, fulfill it, stand before you and say thank you for helping me. I want to pray with you. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity you gave me. I ask you that to be my Lord and be my Savior. Give me the grace to live for you. I receive the grace to say no to sin. And every covenant I have with the devil, Father, by the power in the blood of Jesus, let it be broken. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As you accept the Lord Jesus today, he becomes your Lord what it means to be your Lord is that you're no longer the Lord of your life. You can't just do what you want to do. He will tell you, you know you used to do this. Now you're born again. You can't do this again. And then you receive the grace not to do it. And as you receive that grace, the Lord will cause your light to shine before men. They will say, we know this man before. We know this woman before. She's no longer what she used to be. And that will be a testimony. Receive grace for that in the name of Jesus. Can we pray together for every one of us hearing us now? We can pray together and say, Father, thank you because I know this as a weakness. I know this as a weakness. There are other things about weaknesses in my life I don't know about. Can we pray together and say, Father, open my eyes. Let me understand those things that so easily beset me. Those weights that I carry that is not allowing me to run effectively. Father, can you help me to identify every one of them. You may not really see them the way they are until the Holy Spirit points them out to you. Can you say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I am trusting you, Lord, to show me to me those weaknesses, those things that beset me. Lord, I trust you that you reveal them to me and help me to lay them aside in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you and for everyone hearing us, everyone that will hear us through whatever means. I pray the Lord himself to reveal to you those things that weighs you down and those things that easily beset you so many of them it might be more than one two three four whatever the lord will reveal them and as he reveals them he takes you by the hand and teaches you how to walk out of the enemy so the devil will not have any hold on you praise the name of jesus i pray the lord to bless you to keep you to preserve you in the name of jesus this is a restored woman and i'm talking the lord that greater things will be done in your life hallelujah god bless you i shall always, I shall always. Hallelujah. And a fish.